Hello everyone, this is Blender Guppy. In this video, I'm going to recreate the uh, town model that I did using Random Flow, which I posted in Twitter and Instagram. So it's a square representation of a small town, which you can use to, which you can save or use, use or save as an asset and reuse for your scene as a um model that represents a small sci-fi town uh, that can be rendered uh, mid mid range or long range and if you want to render it close range you will of course have to uh go in and manually detail the randomized result for more close up uh, render so let's start so I started the the randomization using random cells. This is a new operator which is go going to come out in the next update. So basically this will be a lightweight version of what random panels can already do, but will be faster. So let's see, 24 and 1%, 0.1%, 0.1%. And activate this too. Okay, so it's kind of like that. But the new operator itself is working on a different kind of our uh, algorithm for the randomization. So increase the subdivision. We have the pool size, so this is the initial assets of faces to be randomized and after that so I usually just go about five to ten percent and then you can set the island size we have the thickness here and the island size is here so those those uh, initial faces have a random chance to grow and connect with other islands like that so if we can increase the offset to demonstrate and the offset method is individual islands and we increase the scope or the island size you can see that now that it is a singular island it has only a single offset whereas many islands versus a single end so this is the new operator and it creates a each own unique kind of randomized result or geometric noise for um, <clears throat> a more um, for increased um, increased um, type of workflow for you to explore so this is how i did the one of my videos, so link flat faces and link flat faces. And then I just use random loop on this. So what it did was create spaces for the buildings. But of course you don't have it yet. So in order for you to follow in this video, we're just going to use the random panels. And get rid of sound the face islands using uh this uh properties here. Okay, so 24. Increase the panel island size. And remove some of them. And reverse. So the largest the largest island gets removed first and this icon here basically removes them not flatten them or merge them into one single face island so this completely removes them so we're going to design the layout the layout of the town using this uh, method so we can go for this And 
Yeah, let's go for that. That's all the top faces. Um, we're going to just use Shift G, and Shift G is select similar. Coplaner. That means that normal. Yeah, you can use normal as well. Or coplaner. That means that uh, all the faces lie in the same plane. But normal. You can also use normal if if we, even if they're not coplaner. It's if they're facing the same direction, you can cast them all. So that's the difference. So let's just use coplaner. And use so so I've selected the top faces and not the side faces. Around the loop extrude, we're going to uh, just slowly increase the subdivision. Well, um, and decrease the paddle size. Let's see one and increase the offset. So let's just use number for the uh, panel size so we can go smaller. Let's say 10 faces. So percent is 1% of the entire uh, faces subdivided. Uh, entire entire uh, faces selected that are subdivided, that are then subdivided, uh, which is the percentage of person. The number is exact value. So just 10 faces for each island. Here's the offset for... Actually, these overlaps doesn't matter if they share the same um, texture, but we're just going to get rid of that by increasing the thickness of the loop to object. Just one point. So, control, middle mouse, scroll up and down. Like that. So, let's try five faces. And increase sub the cuts here, the base cut. So this this is actually more a lot a lot more than my um initial post. So let's use ten for the uh, layer two object and eight six faces for the loop one object, not layer one, uh, not layer. Okay, so maybe 15, there we go, and I just play along with Global Seed. Also in the next update, some extra settings here. Simple view, uh, let's just see the simplified view of the Redo panels without the um, properties that are properties that are less used will be uh, gone or hidden from the redo panel to let you see this as a smaller so random panels is like that. Okay, we have our buildings now. We can exp um. Should we get rid of the base? Maybe we should get rid of the. Let's just hide it first. And see what this. Okay. Later. So let's go with the ground first. And I'm going to activate HDRI on this HDRI image. And go to shader. And selecting the ground object. New and Control Shift T. Look for a ground texture. Dry mud.
I'm looking for the uh, the pebbles. It doesn't seem to be anywhere area over legs. Dry mud, this is dry mud, this is really brownish. White drop, last texture, white plaster. Snow is the middle. This is a chill floor. Select everything. And principal texture uh, set. And so let's try to make the HDRI transparent. And increase the size of the texture, ground texture. So this is just a, a basic ground texture that I'm using. If you have a better one, I'll go ahead and use it because I'm mostly scripting and not modeling so i don't have a lot of resources for me to use uh, when it comes to image when it comes to image texture so let's use a division here subdivide or subdivision surface now we're going to use simple so as to not to curve the corners and use something like level three okay so that's level three okay level five and also in render is level five then so you, did you see what i did there in wireframe i clicked optimal display so it will show me the real wire for wireframe okay when subdivided the real topology when subdivided not the original so optimal display kind of knocks out the noise if you want to because with this view of course if you zoom out you can't see it in anything anymore okay so next up is displacement uh, displace displacement i'm gonna save this to save this first time series down series one and new and we're going to use cloud texture that is in blender uh, click this icon here to go to the texture tab which is this one here image your movie that's the default when you click the new now we're going to use clouds instead and then go to the displacement modifier and reduce the strength okay also shade smooth and let's try and this. The size of the texture, you have to go to the texture itself, and this is the scale. This is size of basic pure noise. Let's increase the size of something like point five, and also. Um, the uh, color mix and AO on the ground since it since it isn't a flat plane anymore. There's a small bump here. We can take it. We can of course produce some mild AO to make those uh, bumps more um obvious more obvious. Sorry about that. I forgot that I'm not supposed to speak when the viewport is rendering. Okay, so let's adjust the ambient occlusion and render this. Okay, let's get to the town shader. So this is the town. 
selecting everything i'm going to use creative flow to uh, assign a material to all to these multiple objects a single material to all these old uh, objects so actually let's use um random vertex color on this first black and white and islands okay so selecting the buildings shift gt and deselecting the ground okay this this and this and then assign vertex color material and use vertex color First off, mix and AO. But this time we're not going to use um, color ramp. Just multiply the AO to the initial uh, base color. Oh, the plane as well. Wait, this is the plane. And this is the random panel. Oh, okay. It's new. Don't just say a single color for this, which is a bit dark. Set that's probably it's not the base color, it's the reflection. Now let's go ahead and uh, use, I'm going to use a JS placement texture for the small details. So multiply, shift T, control T. Use this one here. So this is not UV, so I'm just going to use object mapping. And also use color ramp here to control the result. So when using object mapping, you have to set this to box for in order for it to display correctly. Then you can just adjust the blend. So the texture will actually blend and have a softer transition if the edges are too sharp. So let's just use a point three or yeah. Then we're going to adjust the color, the color ramp. Then we're going to um, use this as a bump. 
So the color ramp here is for the texture. And we might use another color ramp for the, a different color ramp for the a bump. So vector and select bump, you see, uh, set this to height and render. So we're initially going to render at one strength, then adjust the values. So remember that you're going for the look, which is going to be uh, based on the um, the distance you're going to render this from. So optimally, this will be because of its nature. So optimally, this will be at mid ranges or far ranges render. So you can't really. Um, <clears throat> Render this uh, up close because it will be betray its uh, betray its um, purpose. But if you want to render it close up, of course you have to model this, model the randomized results some more with um, tertiary details. But for this video, we're going to uh, use textures to create a believable model that's going to be in the rendered in the middle to far away ranges. So I'm going to adjust the, uh, the buildings are looking too black. And then create lighting from the sides of the building. So we're going to use the same texture, but separate it and and use different settings for the lights. Transmission, emission, and color ramp here. We're going to use constant instead of linear and see the result Now let's try to avoid the lights from <clears throat> showing up on top of the building, so only at the <clears throat> sides. So we're going to multiply this with the geometry, let's, let's use geometry, with the normal information of the model. We're going to extract the X, Y, and Z 
information. So x, y, and z is RGB. So x, uh, that this represents the uh, axis here, the global axis. This is not normal axis. Okay, this is global axis. And then uh, multiply it. Geometry, multiply it here. Oh, so Z, let's try Z because it's on the top. It's in the strength. So we know what we're, uh, we can see what we're doing and I'm going to change the HRI as well. Um, I forgot about it. This is not supposed to be precision. This is supposed to be normal. Okay, so the invert needed to be there. And we use the Z direction because, of course, Z is top to bottom direction. Now you can see that the lights are no longer uh, emanating from the top of the buildings. And I'm going to use the, or append the dirt shader that I'm using. You can find this in my Patreon and you can download it for free. No tree, simple dirt. And multiply it here. Simple dirt and multiply it in the texture. Set this to one. We're then going to I'm then going to adjust the um simple dirt uh properties.
Okay, so that introduced um, noise and break up the monotony of the colors in the buildings. Okay, so now, um, now you can see that the, uh, I think I should render this and explain, wait, here we go, and try to render this, um, let's just use 30 to samples, go to performance, persistent, persistent data and top 56 pixels for the tiling, render. Okay, so you can see that now we have a working model. So uh, if you want it at uh, this state, you can, of course, make it. Uh, if you want it at this state, of course, you can make it work. But you can also dig in more and add like trees and also low poly trees and also marks and also other stuff. And this like this will be like, uh, and you can save this as an asset, join everything, and save it as an asset, and where you can drag and drop into different scenes. Uh, you can replace the ground with a hard surface type um, element, not this uh, desert to the desert uh, looking texture, of course, and change the over. Um, basically change uh, the shaders um, from what I'm using to create a different look so um, yeah I think uh, this will a couple of rocks uh, big rocks and also some palm trees some alien trees to make this uh, really uh, cool unit that you can reuse for your scene. Yeah, I'm very tempted to try to scatter to create the rocks, but yeah, that will probably add extra time. Probably next time. Because I'm going to be experimenting and that could lengthen the video a lot more. I'm going to just practice on that and so it will be shorter next time. But this is already looking pretty cool so let's let's experiment with the lighting let's try different um let's play with the ao of the ground distance
yeah, I think it looks believable in every angle and lighting. Let's take a look at our shader. What we did, um, J's placement. If you don't have J's placement, you can, of course, take a look at the video on how I bake details using the Airflow add-on on a square uh, face. You can uh, use the add-on on that and then uh, produce those tiny details using the ra uh, randomized results, then bake it, and then use it like uh, how you would use um, J's placement images for the tertiary details so yeah that will be achieved using that so this is our J's placement for the uh, texture uh, for the base color and we have the attributes the vertex color for the buildings to have uh, different gradations of gray between each Face islands, we have the ambient occlusion, not color ramped, and we have the lights using the same image texture but with the different scale setting or mapping settings. And set to the emission, and then we use the geometry of the object, uh, the normal information of the object, or the global XYZ of the object to mask the light and only produce the lights from the sides of the model. Okay, and we have the dirt, which is basically just uh, the ones I got uh, for free in the internet. So this is shell floor, and we multiplied um, ambient occlusion in it, on it and color ramped it, uh, controlled it with color ramp. So its values in uh, its intensity increased based on its distance and the proximity of other objects uh, near it so this is the ground this is the objects near it Okay, that is it. And see, uh, let's see, um, camera. Lock to camera view, focus the ground. Get the camera, move it in the Z axis and zoom out. Render again. Okay, so there's a few uh, patches here where the ground is. Actually, the building is elevated from the ground, but that could be fixed by just uh, controlling the texture. Okay, so that's it for this video. That's the basic workflow for creating this type of things using the uh, cre creative uh, bundle add-ons. Okay, so how can I wait? Uh, I'm gonna show you how to uh, save it as a single object. Okay, um, save it first. Okay, we we can of course let's see. 
we can reduce the texture here by decimating but let's apply the modifiers first or we can use the creative flow apply mesh and let's decimate Point one point zero five. Let's see. Yeah, still has those any bumps. So apply and select everything. Actually, we can clean this up more. Select this tree here, and I'm going to go to run and flow extras cleanup so cleanup has also changed for the update you can now only do a single oper uh, cleanup operation per use of the operator to avoid uh, certain errors but you have to select the faces it now works on selected faces only so let's not use double and just use limited dissolve and okay so cleaned up one, uh, 12,502 faces. So we have this. We have generated ingons, but um, yeah, kind of close triangulate. We have generated ingons, but this is a static object, so it doesn't matter. Okay, we are going to join it on the plane objects. Shift Q for the random flow. Mesh and uh, join objects and plane. Okay, now they are single object with the uh, proper materials assigned to the proper faces. Okay. And now let's try and save this as another file. Now we can save it as an asset. Let's uh, what is shift F1? F1. Okay. So outliner from outliner hover the mouse here or in any window. I I'm using the outliner. Shift F1. If it shows you the uh, file browser, shift F1, press shift F1 again. Then it shows it will show you the um um the uh asset library window. Okay, so we're going to assign this as an asset. What is uh how do you sign it as an asset <laughs> view select okay an object asset mark as asset and hopefully it doesn't crash okay so now we have our plane object here or yeah uh i suggest you i suggest you change the name before you um of course um okay so now this file has this uh, asset here so if you save this blend scene on your asset folder which can be set in the preferences in the file fats this is your asset libraries and you're gonna set your asset folder here. So basically the blend files that all have asset objects on them. Uh, objects or models marked as assets in them. So it shows up when you use the user library here. Okay, you save that file, you save this file there. And then anytime you open a blender file and you go to the asset library window and you use the user library, you can see the you will see this here uh, there because you saved this file in your asset uh, library folder. I used the uh, folder where I save most of my blend files. So this is, this will be chaotic in most cases. So create another folder that is specific to the library. Okay. I just use that because I'm lazy. Okay. Um, close that. Save this file, open a new one. Let's create a plane where, where we could stick it, stick the asset. Uh, uh, actually, the origin. Wait, wait, wait. Control Shift. 
down and basically how do you delete this okay unmark as asset windows objects object object asset clear as asset okay where's the at the bottom okay so that was actually right so be sure to set your origins correctly so we're going to set this at the very bottom vertice vert vertex and we can use we can use random flow for that set origin axis local z axis or global z axis ooh pointed at the wrong one okay um might have to review that so this is already fine i don't know what a, i just had to make sure so object mark as asset we'll save free view refresh okay and open a new uh, blend file I'm going to create a plane where I can stick the uh, model there. Shift F1 and then F1 again. Maximize this. And this is the T um, panel and this is the end panel. So T panel, end panel. Most Blender windows have that. So remember, remember those shortcuts and those terms when someone says T panel and the end panel. Okay, so use a library. And we're going to seek it out using this. There we go. There's the plane. Drag it and stick it. So for example, these are this is your work mesh and you already have a bunch of other uh kit bash uh uh set there you can just use this to stick the model there and you don't have to worry about the texture because the blend file that this is in has that um uh, has those materials and it will uh imp import yeah import it directly to this automatically to this uh new blend scene so if we render this there we have a part go down And you can't do that. Shift F1, F1. Apparently, you can't uh, drag and drop while it's rendering. <laughs> so, use a library. Plane and drag and drop, drag and drop. After you drag it, you can sort of scale it, rotate it. And we are going to render again. Like this quarry zero tree HRI. Okay, so that is how was it? You might have to uh, get rid of the displacement if you want it to 
um, align to um to your space or face. So yeah, you can skip the displacement part and just use textures here. Instead of the displacement, use what I've said: uh, extra rocks and the trees to create um, variation in the straight surface of the ground. Okay. So there we go. I think you can rename. No, you have to rename this object on the original blend file. So that is it for this video, and we use. A random panels and random extrude for this model here okay so yeah if you have any questions be sure to use the comment uh, section and the links in the description thank you for watching and have a nice day